So we started on the top of the uh, fender. We're going to lead into the cow panel and the hood and the nose. Um, we have our side pieces sections built for our fender. Um, we just need to finish them off real smooth and stuff yet, but uh, we have them all pretty well fitted. Uh, so we're going to, I'm going to start. I had guys yesterday, uh, we took part of the day as a fun day. These guys have been working so hard and I haven't had much time to film. And uh, I, I told the boys yesterday, I said, let's, let's take the rest of the day. We'll just have a, some fun. You know, we're going to work on some of these panels and whatnot. And I didn't get any footage of it, but, uh, you know, they want to learn how to uh, form sheet metal, you know, shape it and whatnot a little more. So uh, I figured yesterday, you know, they've been working their butts off. So I said, yeah, let's, you know, let's just do some stuff. And uh, I really didn't get any footage of it, like I said, but we're going to uh, work on this, the top side of this fender section today. Um, I can come in when it's quiet and get a little bit done actually so you know with this virus going around everybody has the collision side of our business has all but flattened out but, uh, you know very thankful we still have a lot of project stuff hot rods are still coming in and whatnot uh, you know to get some things done to them or they're all completely redone so, you know, I'm thankful that we still have this side of the business going for us. So, but, uh, you know, this is actually my project right now. So I have people interested in, in a couple of these bodies or whatever. But uh, we'll see where that leads to. Um, but right now, you know, my focus just to build this one for myself. Uh, and, and we'll see where that leads us into, you know, in the future. But... Let's get busy trying to shape these upper pieces. Now these are these are uh, they got a lot of complex stuff going on to them. You know, it bends one way and then comes back up another. So uh, sometimes what you think you need to do, you need to do the opposite in this kind of in these situations. But uh, follow me, and we'll figure it out. So, I've got this piece all but uh, finished. It has a little bit of rock in it. i got to do a little bit of twisting or whatever yet and uh, bring this radius down. But I don't know if you can see this, but it comes up. It has a little uh, concave area here, and then it's ever so slightly comes back up around. So it's all a matter of manipulating the metal the way you want it. Just a little bit, yeah. Temporarily fasten that on there and move to our piece ahead of it. guys so I have my uh, blank cut out and uh, I'm ready to start shaping this section in here now can this piece be done in one piece yes some of the, some guys are very very skilled at, at doing this uh, I'm going to start breaking the pieces down a little bit better because it's easier to handle and they're a little easier to manipulate the way you want them to go. Um, but for this, you have a, a complex curve rolling around the top plus it's starting to roll down to the front 
of the nose of the car. Now, when you're wheeling this section long ways, on this blank, it's going to create both shapes naturally uh, when you're doing the wheeling process. So it's, it's actually going to fold it, bring it around, it's not really folding it, but it's rolling it around to this shape and it's going to give a little slight rise in the center or uh, crowning action this way as well. So what I generally do, I find I have a contour gauge, um, different radiuses on there and I find what the closest ones are yeah, in this particular section, a four inch radius is going to be about what I need to go around there. So we're going to start with a sl uh, slightly less radius anvil though, the lower anvil on the English wheel. Or, you know, if you're using a power hammer, obviously be a lower die. But uh, we're going to start that wheeling process a lot. And I'm going to get this up here. Or a wood pattern. So I'm going to uh, take a marker, permanent marker, and I'm going to just roughly find the center of those radiuses there. And, uh, Then we're going to start that wheeling process. Uh, just light pressure. We don't need to shape it too quick. Uh, it'll come around gradual. It's easier to take it a little step by step than to overdo it and then try to bring it back sometimes. So let's uh, let's get wheeling on this section here. So. See it's starting to get that shape a little bit, both ways actually. You can see it's going down and we have a crown here starting.
Now, if you're watching this closely, um, I don't know if you can see it real well or not. This section, as I'm rolling this down, it's giving an extra material down here because it's stretching this and it has to go somewhere. But this section actually wants to naturally fold up. And that's what we need for our return once we get this uh, shaped up here where it fits on the, the highest crown point of the, the buck. Um, when it comes down, it actually naturally has to come back up a hair. So that's working in my favor right now. So if I put a little down pressure on this as well, on the bottom and middle, it's uh, going to help a little bit as far as getting that radius coming down uh, toward the, the front slope, toward the nose. You can manipulate the metal, or in this case aluminum, um, little by little by helping it go the way you want it to go, I should say, I guess. So even if you're just doing this, you can pull down on the sides, put a little more down pressure, and that'll help speed up the process a little bit as well. This little, this piece is a little long to really work out real well. <clears throat> I can do it, but it's not real comfortable. But you do what it takes to get the job done, I guess, so. You can control your pattern. A little better. It's a little slower doing it this way. Everybody has their own methods to this. Uh, is there a right or wrong way? I, I don't think so. As long as the panel comes out the way you want it to, it's not wrong. Not everybody has the same equipment or machinery to do what needs to be done. In the old times, people have built automobiles with nothing more than a hammer and a stump, pretty much. So it's all in the eye of the beholder what you want to do in your imagination. You know, I've never had any training other than some books and watching videos and stuff. You know, it's all hands on. It's like uh, like they say, there's it's every day's a school day, you know. You're it's not failure, it's a lesson. And a lot of times, not every time, but most cases, you know, that can be corrected to a point. So got quite a bit of shape in it now. I'm gonna have to switch over. I'll probably just go to the other other wheel, the smaller one, uh, with a four inch anvil in it, lower anvil. And, but you can see it's getting that shape. And as I said, it's starting to get that return naturally there. Uh, and, and we do need that to come up alongside the hood. So let's keep wheeling. We'll go over and test fit this and uh, We'll work off the other wheel, the cheaper one for now. All right. We were back here on the Habafay English wheel. Some of you metal masters would be scrunching. 
but you know what? They're a couple hundred dollars. Anybody can get started in cheap metal shaping. Is it the best? Absolutely not. Not even close. But it's perfect for a beginner. And I've had this one probably, I don't know, eight or ten years probably. Not long after they first came out. I still don't have a high dollar precision English wheel. I have a, one from Woodward Fab and yeah. I wish they had a, a lot better assortment of annuals, but <clears throat> I have some ordered from Hoosier Profiles, Joan Peggy. So hopefully uh, they'll add to my set and uh, do what I think they'll do. I'm sure. I'm sure their quality is pretty high standards so I didn't do anything to this English wheel it's it's as is when I bought it a long time ago but uh, you know it does have flex in it you know obviously Harbor Freight is you know they they are what they are now. I mean, over the years, their tools have gotten a little better, but <clears throat> hey, for the money. They're working pretty good for me, so. Yeah, and someday maybe I'll strengthen up this frame or just build a whole new one completely. But, like I said, for now, it's good for roughing things out. It's not the best finishing wheel. But it'll get you going. All right. Let me go back over to the bucking. See where we're at. Some registration marks back here on this panel and this one so I can keep it lined up. Um, give me a better idea what we need to do or what needs to be done, I should say. Nobody's here but me today. I didn't even bring my dog decorator along today because I've got to do a little bit of welding on another project for a customer. So. Uh, I don't have a welding helmet for my dog, and he likes to be beside me all the time, so he needs to know where I'm at. Alright, that's not looking bad. I gotta bring this down, uh, a little more crown on there, and I gotta add some this way. <clears throat> so we'll be doing some cross wheeling here at some point soon. Here's getting a lot tighter. All right, I'm gonna get back at it. All right, so I want to show you guys. I mentioned the return a little while ago, not, not long ago, uh, in the last clip, I think. But here's what we have. This is all 
starting to come to shape, but it's pushing the metal down. So you can see the difference. This has to come down to meet this. And essentially, there's going to be a cave, I'm going to call it, down in there. But this is what has to happen. You can see this extra metal, once it comes down, it's going to naturally want to go down into that. Now, you think, yeah, we got to flip it upside down, we got to wheel it, we got to do this or that. But essentially, this edge needs stretched. And that's going to help bring that metal in. As it stretches out here, it's going to push in and it's going to bring that down. I don't know if you're following me or not, but I'm trying to explain it the best I can. You can see these panels are up here. Together, but uh, you can see how that wants to lay down, and that's going to help with this as well. It's going to bring everything down to the place where it needs to be. Will I do some wheeling on it? I may. I got to do some more out here yet, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea of, the, uh, of what needs to happen. So, quite a bit of shape to do in it yet, um, to get everything to lay down. But, you know, some people, wow, well, you got to shrink that edge up, but no, that's not always the case. Sometimes things are opposite. I'm going to work at it some more. Alright guys, after a bunch of wheeling and stretching, and um, I have it coming along pretty good. It's still rough, very rough yet, but uh, I want to give you guys an example. I don't know if I can get this camera stand down low enough. Here we go. Now you can see how, <clears throat> obviously, we have this shape and we also having it going this way okay now it's fitting the it's fitting the buck pretty good I mean it still needs a little work uh, this valley down here when this return is what they call the return the English do but I mean this is a complex shape it still needs a little stretching here that's going to flatten this out and allow that to lay. And then also it's going to, as it stretches out here, obviously you want to stretch it more out on the edge than you do as you move in. But that will actually move this valley a little bit. Uh, and it should tighten that up as we stretch this. Now, uh, you can do it on a power hammer or English wheel. You know, shrinker stretcher uh, if you have that set up. But I'll probably do a combination just to speed the process up. I don't mind a little mark in my panel. This is going to be painted, you know, in, in the end, anyways. It'll all get metal finished, obviously, before that. But this is how that process works. It's, it's coming along. I mean, you know, and I, you always, you always, always, always want to leave extra material, both width and length, for trimming purposes at the end. So, uh, looking forward to getting this thing finished. Move on to the next panel. There we go. I had it clamped a little different than where I should have, but. Yeah, it's got a little bit of rock in it yet, but it's just because it needs stretched so it lays flatter on the, on the 
pan on it, but it's not bad. I'm going to keep chumming along at it.